Hey everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to take you along with me to an estate sale. And I'm also going to reveal why this is the absolute best kind of estate sale that you can attend. So, stick around. Alright, so let's go ahead and head to the estate sale. And let me show you the way that I saw it and see what you think. And, and then we'll come back to it and do a little bit of a haul video at the end.
What makes this kind of estate sale special is that it is a make a pile estate sale. Uh, the person running it takes on jobs that a lot of other estate sale people don't want and he knows that he needs to move a lot of inventory, that the family really needs to get out from underneath it, and he also maintains a special relationship with uh, resellers. It doesn't bother him that you're hoping to make money. He needs to move as much as he can and still make what he can for the family. So you get an opportunity to go in and pick up things you might otherwise leave behind because you can't do the research. And I have one of those kind of items. So uh, you watch me walk through it. Some of the items you've seen, some you didn't. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and, and show you a few of the things that I grabbed. All right, you have seen these a hundred times. These are the old mom jeans. Uh, if you take a look at that, I think that that inseam is going to come in right at 14 to 14 and a half inches and uh, so grabbed a pair of those I will usually grab uh, satin jackets if they're in good shape uh, what I look for on them is the inside is typically white not always but typically white and I try to make sure that it's relatively clean and not too awful pilled up and then I look them over um, at this estate sale the, um, the original homeowners worked for Lennox, which is an air conditioning company. Um, when you're at a make a pile uh, estate sale and you're not paying individually, you can buy things like that. That jacket's probably only worth $30, but I can pick it up because I didn't have to spend a whole lot for any one individual item. One of the things that I picked up at this estate sale that I would not normally pick up just because I don't have a lot of expertise in them, is a motor. And this is a condenser fan motor. And that's the information there. Uh, a lot of times when you see motors at a state sale, they've priced them really, really high. And I just can't afford to gamble. But when, when I'm really getting a price based on quantity, then it's worth it for me to go ahead and, and grab those kind of things and wait and see. And here's another one that... I don't always pick up the uh, the Walls jackets, but Walls has really come on in the last, especially the last year or so. Uh, these vintage jackets have, have, they do pretty well. That one should be 30 to 40. If this is your first time on my channel, uh, Melody and I do it a little bit different. We prefer to buy in quantity and then, and then we give a lot of this stuff away. So after we go through our triage and we determine what's worth it for us, uh, we separate it into several piles. One is, this is the stuff we're going to list. We put it into a pile of stuff that will go into a garage sale. And then we will, uh, uh, a pile that we give to other resellers. And so we've got a, a couple of groups that, 
that's what they do and, and we help them out all we can okay uh i remember this brand from back in the day um the brand is mo betta <laughs> and uh, this one <laughs> still has the original tags on it and so I don't know about this particular shirt. Some of the Mo Better shirts go for as much as $100. I'm expecting this one to fall more into that $45 range. Um, but with the tags on it, I don't know. Maybe it'll go for a little more. All right. I'm going to point you at my mannequin because uh, this next one, I picked it up because I really like it. But I don't know that it's really worth a lot of money. Uh, I'm expecting it. It'll probably go for closer to $30. But I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit. And if you'll look at my mannequin right there. And I'll see if I can't zoom in a little bit for you. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is like a women's acid washed duster writing jacket. <laughs> it is... Uh, in good shape, but really just screams 1980s. Look at the wash on that thing. That's incredible. Okay, also at this sale, um, if, if you watched, there was a bag of t-shirts that was unopened. I did get permission to open the bag. Um, so anyway, I, I, I grabbed some t-shirts. You tell me. I haven't looked them up. I don't know where they go. I don't know what they will go for. This is actually the first one I pulled out of it. The brand is Flirt. It is a women's sleep shirt. And it is just worn out. It is dated. It is dated 1978. Uh, Garfield can sell well. Uh, you get the original t-shirts and, and uh, they can do pretty well. They were Cowboys fans, so hopefully a couple of these will fit me. This one is 93. Um, a lot of the Super Bowl shirts, it, it's not that they're not vintage, it's that they made so many of them that the price isn't all that high. Typically, these will go for about 20 bucks. Uh, what I will do is go through them and see if there's not one that's worth a little bit more, and if not... Then, then most of these I will give to the lady that I, I give all of our uh, excess inventory to. Just a good old Mickey Mouse t-shirt. It is on the Mickey Mouse tag, like, like it should be. Uh, some of the vintage Mickey Mouse shirts can go for quite a bit, so we'll make sure that that one's not one of them before, uh, before I give it away. Now, with the NFL sweatshirts i do a little better with those and with the college ones typically these for me will hit that 30 to 40 dollar range and so you know this one also looked pretty good um the condition on it was was really nice it, it came out of the wash pretty clean more t-shirts and the good news is on a lot of these t-shirts they weren't super common um, patterns that I've seen. And this is a great tag. When you see that jerseys tag right there, uh, that's one of the ones as far as when they moved out of the United States in the 90s and first went to Honduras, a lot of those jerseys tags still sell pretty well. Now, I really like this one, and I, I did spend a little bit of time trying to look this one up, and I couldn't find it. Uh, first is it's got the Nike silver tag. And because these all came from the same estate, a lot of them are going to be about the same age. They're going to hit that 90s range. But look at this spell out on this one. Just a great big hit on the front. Uh, nothing on the back. It's got a little bit of wear to it. <clears throat> I don't know that that'll hurt it. I think that that shirt, it looks pretty sharp. So I like that Nike one a lot. <laughs> this is a pattern that was popular in the 80s and 90s it's on that same jerseys tag this one's the sweatshirt i will do pretty well with this 
You'll see this in a couple of different formats. You'll see the one that's kind of traditional like this one. Uh, but you'll also see one where the angel is smoking. And both of those actually do pretty well. So uh, again, for me, that's probably a $30 to $35 sweatshirt. I guess I picked up more of these that I like than I thought. Uh, this one is on the Guest USA tag. It's got a nice big spell out on the front. And again, it, it, it's got a little bit of wear. It's got some, it shows some age, but I actually like that one a lot. It's dated 1992, so that's a cool shirt. Now, the next shirt is a prime example of something I probably wouldn't have grabbed except for that it's a make a pile. And I know I'm not going to pay a lot for this individual shirt. I don't know that there's anything particularly special about it. Um... It is signed. It's dated 1995, so I will look that up. The tag is, it just says old school. Um, nothing wrong with it. I don't know that that has a lot of resale value. I'll look up the artist's name and see if they made patterns that people are chasing, but my gut says that's probably more like a $15 to $20 shirt, and I'll end up giving that one away. The next one... Um, it's kind of a bolo, but not for this particular shirt. Uh, the shirt itself actually has a neat pattern on it. If you can see that it's got a little bit of uh, glitter to it. The tag, the diamond dust, uh, obviously it's because they included some glitter into their, their puff paint on these shirts. This isn't the shirt you're looking for, but Diamond Dust made one uh, with Princess Diana. And uh, that shirt can hit $100 or better. So uh, if you see a really glittery uh, uh, Princess Diana shirt, you should probably pick that up and take a look at it. And the last one I'm going to show you is another sweatshirt. I've done really well this last year with the white sweatshirts. Um, if they will come reasonably clean... Um, and white's pretty easy to clean because you can actually hit it with a little bit of uh, Clorox cleanup if you end up with a spot. But this one's pretty clean from the get-go. Um, Super Bowl 28, that's a, that, that one should bring 35, maybe 40. Um, the person that runs this particular estate sale company, uh, he supports sellers because his opinion is, is that they will come in and move a lot of inventory for him. And in return for that, he's willing to give you a better price. And the bigger that stack gets, and he can see that he's moving through a bunch of the stuff that he's not going to leave the family saddled with it, uh, the better for him, the better for me, and the better for his client. Um, in an upcoming video, he has agreed to do an interview with me, and we may get a chance to go through the setup process on uh, how he prepares for uh, an estate sale. So uh, I'm... I'm hoping that was interesting for you. Uh, I know I'm already going to get a comment before I close. I'm going to get a comment about going down into the storm shelter. I just thought that there's a lot of you that may not have actually been inside of one. If you don't live uh, in this part of the world, you may not need a tornado shelter. If you live up north, you have basements. But in Texas, uh, at least this part of Texas, we don't have basements. And so they dig a hole out in the yard and fill it with concrete and and uh, put a dome on it and a breathing tube and a little bit of a skylight and, and that's what it is. I did get permission to go in there before I went in. I did not just walk into their backyard and trespass. So uh, they know me, so I, I, I perhaps get just a little bit more latitude than you would if you just showed up and asked to go do something like that. But I just went in to give you an idea of what they look like. They're, they're not exactly or at least this one they're not exactly homey uh they're really made uh utilitarian more than anything else so okay that's the end of the haul for this one i appreciate you sticking around till the end if you haven't done so i would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe it helps my channel out a whole bunch uh, we've got some interesting stuff coming up in the future and you don't want to miss it so that's it thanks for being here and i will see you on the next one thanks